iPhone mirroring on the Mac lets you control your phone using your computer, a major convenience when your phone is in your pocket, your purse, or your backpack. All your notifications can be mirrored onto your Mac as well, letting you triage them and take care of business without even touching your phone or interrupting your workflow. Here's how it works. Introduced in iOS 18 and macOS Sequoia, iPhone mirroring is the latest in a line of features called continuity. Features that let your iPhone, Mac, and other Apple devices work together seamlessly and totally wirelessly. Other continuity features include universal clipboard, which lets you copy and paste things from one device onto another, the ability to unlock a Mac with an Apple Watch, and continuity camera, which lets you use an iPhone as a high-definition webcam for your Mac. iOS 18 is available right now and runs on all of these iPhones, as is macOS Sequoia, which runs on all Apple Silicon Macs and the last few Intel models. For this feature to work, both devices need to be signed into the same Apple account, which means you probably can't use this feature with your personal iPhone and a work-issued Mac. Both devices also need to have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth enabled, and you can't use this feature simultaneously with AirPlay, iPad sidecar, or Mac internet sharing. After you update both devices, you'll see an iPhone mirroring icon on your dock, and you can click to launch the setup process. You'll see a little splash screen explaining how it works, and then you can click continue. Then you'll be prompted to type in the passcode on your iPhone, and then you can choose whether or not you want notifications from your iPhone to be mirrored onto your Mac. You can click either allow or don't allow. Personally, I allowed it, but only because I diligently mute notifications on my iPhone to begin with. A feature you may want to be aware of is that you can go up to iPhone mirroring, settings, and enable automatically authenticate. That way you don't have to type in your Mac password every time you launch iPhone mirroring, which can get kind of tiring. Personally, I have that enabled, but only because I never tell anybody my Mac password and I diligently lock it every time I'm away from my Mac. If that isn't your situation, then I would keep it set to ask every time. Also, if you like, you can remove the iPhone mirroring icon from your dock. You can launch it at any time in the future with Spotlight by hitting Command Space, typing in iPhone mirroring, usually it auto-completes after just the first three letters, and hitting return. Controlling your iPhone from your Mac is generally pretty intuitive. A click of the mouse simulates a tap on the screen. If you're using a Mac with a trackpad or magic mouse, you can swipe across the surface to freely scroll in any direction. If you have a traditional mouse, you can use the scroll wheel to go up or down, or click and drag the mouse button to scroll left and right. When you're using iPhone mirroring, the Mac window controls are hidden, but if you mouse around the top of the screen, they'll appear. The buttons on the right will go to the home screen or bring up the app switcher. You can also use keyboard shortcuts. Command 1 will go to the home screen, Command 2 lets you scroll through open apps, and Command 3 brings up Spotlight Search. You can also use keyboard shortcuts to adjust the size of the screen on your Mac. Command minus makes it smaller, Command plus makes it bigger, and Command zero resets it to actual size. Also, in a future update to iPhone mirroring, you'll be able to use drag and drop to move files from your Mac onto your iPhone. Drag a file from the Finder, an image or video from Photos, or other items onto the mirrored iPhone screen, and you can drop the attachment into the app you're using. If you enable notifications, banners from your iPhone will show up on your Mac. Just click on one of them, and it'll launch iPhone mirroring into that particular app. It's very smart. However, there are a few exceptions. On the Mac, I use Discord using a custom Safari web app, which means I don't need Discord notifications to come through. Luckily, you can go to System Settings, Notifications, and click Allow Notifications from iPhone to customize it. Uncheck any of the apps you don't want to see on your Mac. Apps that are already disabled on your iPhone are grayed out and can't be enabled, but of course you can customize this. Open your phone, you can even use iPhone mirroring for it, and go to Settings, Notifications to re-enable an app that you previously silenced. iPhone mirroring only works while your iPhone is locked. If mirroring is active and your phone is unlocked, mirroring immediately stops. 
This is to prevent someone from nabbing your MacBook to see what you're doing on your phone. While your iPhone is being mirrored, you'll see a permanent notification on your lock screen that says iPhone in use. And the next time you use your iPhone, you'll see a small banner at the top of the screen that tells you mirroring was recently active. These both make it abundantly clear what's happening without getting in your way. For security reasons, your iPhone's camera and microphone are both disabled during mirroring. So you can't leave your phone in an inconspicuous spot and use mirroring from your Mac to spy on people. Now, unfortunately, that does mean that apps like Snapchat, Be Real, Camo, or Final Cut Camera don't work in iPhone mirroring. Furthermore, if you use Snapchat, it'll alert the other person that you're screen recording their snaps and conversations. So maybe just use the web app on your Mac instead. Also in iPhone mirroring, you can't change Face ID and passcode settings. The option simply doesn't exist in the settings app when you open it. This prevents someone from using iPhone mirroring to change your passcode without your knowledge. If you upgrade or replace your iPhone, you can easily change iPhone mirroring to use the new one. From the iPhone mirroring app on your Mac, go to the menu bar and click iPhone mirroring settings. Then click change iPhone. This will automatically open system settings to the desktop and dock panel. Under the widgets section, set the drop down box next to iPhone to the device you want to use. Then go back to iPhone mirroring and you'll see a screen that says iPhone changed. Click connect. If for whatever reason you want to remove iPhone mirroring entirely from your Mac, you can easily do so. Just click revoke access. You'll be asked again to make sure and click revoke. And that is how to use iPhone mirroring. Be sure to check out my other video on more awesome continuity features. I'm D. Griffin Jones with Cult of Mac.